Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here with my guest, Chad Lutsky, and we're doing something different today. Uh, we are doing a live collab, starting with a brainstorming session this morning. We should be going for about an hour, roughly. Uh, it might last longer. I don't know how long this is going to last, but you guys are going to be able to witness the, in the inception of the idea all the way, hopefully, to publication. Um, the tentative plan right now, me and Chad talked about this, uh, yesterday, what is, we'll do all the brainstorming, get everything set up before we start writing, and then we will write it live also, uh, live, when I write my sections, I'll be live on my channel, he'll be live on his, or, you know, maybe, I, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that all the time, but that's the game plan right now, uh, because sometimes I wake up three o'clock in the morning, and I just want to start writing. I guess I can just go ahead and click live. <laughs> I guess. But anyways, how you how you doing, Chad? How you been? I'm doing all right, man. I'm I'm tired, just like you are. <laughs> Y'all, I just woke up. So uh, if I'm not the bubbly personality you're expecting, I apologize. Uh, I was telling Chad yesterday, I get up between five and seven every day, and my alarm clock is set for six. Sometimes I wake up before it. Sometimes I turn it off and sleep in a little bit. But uh, this morning I wake up and it's daylight. And it's already eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, well, shit, because I set my alarm for Monday through Friday so I can sleep in if I can on the weekends. And of course, today being the day I have something to do, I forgot to set it for Saturday or Sunday. No, it's Sunday. See, I don't even know what day it is. I forgot to set it for Sunday. Uh, and I woke up at eight. I'm like, I'm surprised I woke up in time at all because I took a gummy last night. But anyways, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's the gist of, of everything. Where do you want to start? Chad, just that um, I, gu I guess as a uh, um, just preface it by saying, yeah, we haven't really talked. The only thing that we've talked about is uh, uh, the plans that we think we want for when the book is done, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the publisher or whatever. And then um, that this is not horror; that we were no. going to do something that's more along the lines of grit lit or southern goth or i guess something like that and um it'll, it'll still have teeth it just won't be horror <clears throat> yeah yeah other than that we haven't really we haven't thrown out any ideas all that's reserved for here to so that people can be kind of a fly on the wall yeah because um we get um, we were talking yesterday how i i've gotten so many questions about uh you know how do you collaborate how is the you know the process is actually different with each person that you collaborate with but uh people are really fascinated by how it works and so yeah thought it'd be cool to open the door and let people come in and see hey, you worked with tim meyer mayor is it which meyer. One is it? meyer okay mm -hmm. tim meyer uh and john Bowden. have you worked with anybody else yet yeah uh terry m west we wrote terry, a I'm novel sure. together yeah, I and always then, um, that. my bad. I sort of worked with Bob Ford. We we have something on the way way back burner that we had been doing, but um, the uh, the uh, oh, it's early. It, it is yeah, really it is. not even that early. I mean, <laughs> I've been up for two hours, so so I should I should. But I'm on. A, I'm not a coffee drinker, so ah, uh, so yeah. I'll, I'll be little, fine once I get to the bottom of this start. cup. But yeah, I, uh, I mean, I, I had some, some, I guess you'd call failed or whatever uh, um, collaborations with some authors. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's just like, it, and, and I'm still super tight with all of them. Yeah. It's just that for one reason or another, uh, you know, like probably the one that I'm closest with the most is Hunter Shea. Dude ghosted me. We were, we were writing something. <laughs> And then if I ever bring it up, he's just like, oh, yeah, I got busy. I'm like, yeah, all right, man. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I love Hunter. Love him to death. Love his mm -hmm. work. Love him. But <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I cannot imagine a collaboration with Chad Lutsky and Hunter Shea. It is completely two yeah. polar opposite styles. Yes. Uh, every, like he is all about, 
you know the and this is no this is no he's a good writer too don't get me wrong yeah, but he's he is. all about the balls to the walls gore action you know monsters mm-hmm. and all that stuff and then you got chad over here with his you know slice of life stories and everything it actually it probably make for an amazing collaboration yeah, but right. i don't think it would be like you 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 both would have to write each chapter if you get what i'm saying like you know you wouldn't be able to go back and forth with chapters you'd, be, you'd have to layer each other mm-hmm. because you're good at one thing He's good in another. Well, he he's good at the same stuff you are, but he, I guess, what's the best way to put it? He uses more words, I guess, to to get uh, to get points across, whereas yours is, you know, you can explain like an entire scene in a sentence or two, and he might be able to also. But what I'm saying is the styles are completely fucking different. Yeah, his but, if if you think of like, if if you hand somebody a uh, creature uh, from Hunter Shea and you say this is a Bigfoot book, it's like. Yeah, it is, but it's so that's much under, more than that. That's underselling you know? it. You're, you're absolutely right, and that's definitely, definitely not what I was getting at. I know you know, but I'm just yeah. not forming the words right now, because I love his stuff. I love his writing, and he can get really fucking deep. So that's not even what I'm talking about. It's mm-hmm. literally just the style, like the cadence of the words, yeah. would be so different to have <laughs> to have you and him on the same. And with us, I find it funny that it was actually a misconception. That kind of turned you off. It might not have been the only thing, but it was a misconception that all I wrote was horror, uh, because the only thing he had read from me at that point in time was uh, "Everything is Horrible Now," which is mm-hmm. like a Bentley Little book. I'd been reading way too much Bentley Little. Um, it was Bentley Little cosmic horror uh, thing, and that's like the one, probably the worst possible example of my stuff that you <laughs> that you could possibly pick up. And by by now, I'm sure you know Chad agrees, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always I'm I've always been character first, theme second, and then the next thing I worry about is just pacing. You know, is there, is there enough interesting shit happening? And I just let the story become whatever the hell it is. And that's how all the pen names really got started because I would write literally any genre. I would see something and I'd be like, I can do that better, or at mm-hmm. least as well. So let me try this. <clears throat> to to and, uh, to bash hunter for a second uh, on our <laughs> collaboration. You know, we had we had a couple chats, you know, stream yard chats and stuff, and we're spitballing ideas. And we had started our alien abduction uh, novel that we were writing. I had just written, or I just read Communion by Whitley Stryber, terrifying book that I hadn't ever read before. And so we were playing kind of in Hunter's Ballpark. And I get a message from James Newman. Love James's stuff, especially Midnight Rain. It's just one of the best coming of age books. I get a message from him. He's like, Hey, do you want to write a book together? And I was like, freaking James Newman. Uh, <laughs> and I said, Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I would love to, but I'm writing something with Hunter. Uh, so Hunter starts ghosting me soon after that with our project. I get back with James. I was like, Hey man, I'm ready. If you are, he's like, sorry, dude, I'm writing with Ronald Kelly. I'm God like, damn. dude, God damn. Ooh, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter owes you for that one. He owes you like a case. Yeah. Of, I know you don't, you don't drink anymore. But he owes you a case of like Arizona sweet tea or something. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, I have collabed with T.C. Parker. Um, I've collabed with uh, Darren Kapoff, and I've collabed with the very, very little known book Pig with Craig Saunders. Um, I don't know what happened to Craig. Craig kind of fell off the face of the earth for me, so I took the book down because I couldn't send him royalties. Um, is I'm, I'm, I don't know what happened to him. Another person I collabed with is Lee Thompson. Um, and that didn't even come out because, uh, he just, uh, once again, he just disappeared. I'm really, really worried about Lee because no one's talked to him, not even Brian Keene. Um, and I know he was battling with some demons and I'm, I worry about him at least like once a week, but we have a short story called white crosses that is fucking amazing, but I'm not going to, I can't do anything with it because I, I don't have his permission to. <clears throat> but yeah, and Pig was, it, it's funny because me and Craig were both better outside of the horror genre, but we're both horror fans. So we came together to do like this uh, small town, almost zombie possession story. Um, it wasn't really zombies. It was just, uh, it was actually the local drug dealer was poisoning people and those, and the drugs were, were changing people's minds and making them. So it, it's kind of like a feral, uh, like, uh, what is it? Uh, 20, 
eight weeks later kind of deal. It's not really a zombie. Like, you can kill them normally. but <clears throat> And they, they all shared a hive mind because of the chemicals. It was a very wild book. Um, it was also super short. It's like 45,000 uh, words. And we probably should have fleshed it out more. Neither one of us was happy with it after publication. Um, and so it wasn't a huge... Yeah, th- hello, everybody, by the way. Uh, we, we're just talking away, rambling on. But... Um, yeah, uh, that one was my first long form collaboration. And we literally just went back and forth chapter to chapter. Um, I'd write, well, you know, that denotes exactly what you think it does. Um, but uh, let's see here. The fir- my first one was with Lee, Lee Thompson, then Craig. Um, and then I met Darren and TC around the same time. And I wrote both of those, co- uh, both of our first collabs together at the same time so i was writing uh wicked no i take that back we had written uh wicked rex of the west and then um i was writing we are legend and maiden at the same time um which was which was actually good because anytime it kind of sunk up synced it kind of synced up well so uh i would write you know something for we are legend send it to darren and then he'd take about a, a couple days or two up to a week and then during that time while I was waiting, I, I could work with, with TC because TC was much faster. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, it, it just seemed it seemed perfect. But my point is, Chad is absolutely right. Every single collab I have done has been done differently because sometimes we will, you know, layer like me and TC layered. Uh, we didn't really just hand off a character to each other. Whereas with Darren in our first collab, I believe we just passed our characters no, we didn't pass our characters back and forth. We stuck to what characters, you know, we had been writing already. Um, and then for the Wicked Rex of the West, what we did was I did all of the the blending, is what we called it, where you go in to make sure if anything sounds like it's a different author, you know, clean it up. And then Darren did the next book. And TC did uh, the entirety of Maiden um, because she's just a better writer than me, period, hands down. Her vocabulary is better, her her sentence structure, all that stuff. I don't know how the fuck she does it. She writes like Peter Straw, but it reads like like Stephen King. Um, and that's no shitting on Peter Straub, but I've always found King easier to read than Straub, but yet she uses the same vocabulary as, as Straub would. Um, while maintaining amazing character development, amazing plotting, pacing, all that stuff, she's just absolutely fantastic and at this point i have no idea where she is either it's like it's like i'm murdering my collaborators because this is the third one in a row that has disappeared the only one i'm still in contact with is darren but anyways i'm sure she's alive and well somewhere it's just everybody's got stuff going on right now anyway um so getting to hang on oh whoops i was on mute uh, oh, you were on mute? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I started talking and I realized I was on mute. Oh, well, what, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, yeah, some people collaborate like you said you did with TC where you have like a um, uh, rough drafter and then you had a like a reviser mm-hmm. um, where somebody writes, you know, the entire book and then you go in there and you add your voice and you change things. That's kind of how kind of how Wormwood was with Tim um, where because we had two different voices so he would like write a chapter or two and i would go and do everything from completely rewrite it to uh essentially delete it especially when he tried to get supernatural on me with the book a couple times <laughs> Oops. and i had to reel it in um but yeah that was uh that was completely different whereas with Bowden, while his his uh prose is more poetic than i am we have a lot of similarities uh, big time and we can mock each other really well. So it's just passing it back and forth was no, is no problem. There's no, it, it feels seamless by the time we're done. I remember uh, when I was working with Lee, when the, the, when I sent him my first pages, uh, the the short story that you guys will never see probably, but, um, I sent him my first pages and he goes, dude, you write just like me. Like, I gotta go pick up some of your other stuff. I'm like, no, you don't. It's nothing like this. What I'm doing is I'm mimicking you um, because he has a very unique style. It's very close to yours. It's short. It's punchy. It's to the point. 
Um, it's like basically that's where I learned with working with Lee Thompson is where I learned the style for uh, South of here. Um, and I just completely stole his style and then I morphed it into into my own because he's nowhere near as dirty as mine. Yeah, it has a werewolf on it, Haley. Yes. Which uh, we're not doing anything supernatural here. But I figured I'd have my, my wolf blood uh, going on. And Joe said, it's like I'm murdering my collaborators. Great foreshadowing. <laughs> Watch your back, Chad. If Chad just suddenly disappears, there's going to be a lot of very upset people. Not that nobody was upset when the other people disappeared, but they're, they're, re they're really going to come after me because Chad, Chad is a darling in the community. And I say that in the best possible way. People love you, man. <clears throat> um, you want to shoot me your ideas first? Um, yeah. Uh, I had a couple questions, too. Yeah. Are you writing this under Edward Lorne? I can if you want me to. Well, um, you had mentioned about working with some publishers, and I'm just wondering if in the future well, that's going to... Let, let me let me tell you what's happened recently um because of the bullshit in the end i don't want to go too you know what's going on with me um you know you know with the anyways um the the contract is null and void i can do whatever i want with it i would have to sign another one which wouldn't be retroactive so anything that i do before that next contract i can still put lauren on that's why lauren is available to up up for sale now that's why, uh, anyways, but retroactively, retroactively um, now the only issue is if I were to sign again, I might have to take these videos down. But if we cut them all together or whatever, and I send them to you and you upload them to your channel, there's nothing I can do about that because there are, there was a, there's a clause in that contract that states that any, it's only th things underneath my control. And that's why Horror Babble was able to keep up uh, the, the short story they narrated for me on their channel. That's why the audiobooks were left alone, because I share the rights with the narrator. Um, most of them are royalty shares. Um, so all those are still up. And also, I'm under contract with Audible. So the contract with my financiers does not override existing contracts. Um, but all those things would have to go away eventually, things that are contracted. Now, if it was something up on your channel, then uh, 100% we wouldn't have to do anything with it. It could just sit there, kind of like storage. But uh, so that's an option. And I will, they gave me uh, an, an entire year last time to prepare and get everything ready. So we wouldn't even be in a big rush if we had to do that. Um, so if you want to do Lauren, that's fine. But in the future, we may not be able to use the Lauren name um, <clears throat> for if we do more than one book kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's up to you, man. Whatever you want to do. I, I'm more I'm more concerned about. Let's say the book is published, and then something happens again where you're like, they're like, you got to take all your Lauren stuff. Well, now you're attached at the hip yep. with me on a book. Well, that's fine because we would be under contract. If we so if we sold the book, and we were under, uh, we could even write up our own contract. Uh, like you know, we have a five book deal to work with each other kind of deal, and that would supersede. The deal with these guys mm -hmm. so it would i would still be able to yeah the main thing is that the betting of boys doesn't exist that's the main thing that they're worried about and because i cannot take it down permanently from amazon it'll always be there as least at least as a placeholder then that's what they're concerned about because i can't wipe it from the internet i can't take it off goodreads i can't take down reviews of it that kind of thing but since that contract is null avoid because they technically were in breach of it um i was three weeks out from a payday and they had to cancel the contract because none of those things went forward and they didn't want to pay me because those things weren't going to happen. Right. <clears throat> I am still, however, in good standing with them because I talked to them about all this stuff. And it was the same thing. You can do whatever you want. You're out of contract. Um, we hope that you choose not to do anything else like the betting of boys, which is funny because I think. No, no, I was about to say, I think personally that South of here is worse as far as offending people, because. There's a there's a good point to betting of boys, whereas south of here is just, you know, we're all bad and trying not to be. It's that, mm -hmm. it's that final line, that that thing um, <clears throat> or, or we can all be, you know, bad people can be good people. Good people can be bad people mm -hmm. and all that shit. But anyways, um, so I wouldn't worry about it. If you want me, I can always I can always boot up a new pen name. I got a whole list of them over here. <laughs> I can throw together. Uh, but 
I, that is something to worry about also if we go to publishers and those publishers like eh, we don't want to be attached to Lorne because that's happened in the past. Um, I completely missed out on a random uh, penguin deal because of Lorne. So that has happened. Um, I'm just trying I'm trying to make you aware of everything that could be a, a pod you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of people you don't even realize don't like me say they're not gonna read the book. That's yeah. another thing if, if Lorne's name's attached to it. So it's up to you. Um, I know you personally don't care about that kind of shit, but do you have a book that, um, or I'm sorry, do you have a pen name that you plan on building? Another oh, one yeah. that, you, that yeah. you plan on building? Um, I'd have to tell you off. Well, I so no, no, not that I can use with you. Um, oh, okay. I do, I do have because uh, I I don't know if I'm going to be making the new pen names public or not. Um, okay. I, I have no, I have two of them coming up uh one of them is more recent the most recent one is about a month ago uh so things are on the uptick with projects uh because hollywood shut down publishers are finally opening up again um and they they realize that people are going to be reading during this time um raw, raw dead raw, raw dead and uncle e no we're, we're not doing that it'll be a completely different face it'll be completely different everything and yeah, i've hired models in the in the past for the back covers of my books so well, i haven't the publisher has um killing your darlings except it's literally killing actual hey stop it <laughs> i'm not killing anybody craig saunders is fine i'm sure and so is lee thompson i would hope and i know tc parker is alive and well <clears throat> well i i mean I'll, I'll let you make the call i just we, want i want to do <clears throat> um what we can to make the book as successful as it can be oh 100 percent um now we can use lauren man i have no problem using lauren but like i said keep keep in mind that there are going to be people who refuse to even like beta read or read the book that you know that i know you know because you think them in the back of your books that are not going to want to touch this with a 10-foot pole but then again we are doing these things live so mm. i mean they're going to know anyways even though i've changed the name of the channel and everything um but i, I would go over possible <laughs> cynthia pickle breath no uh, who are you, Charles Dickens? Um, anyways, but uh, I don't want to go over possible pin names that I have because if we don't use any of those, then I won't be able to use them live. So that's yeah. something we'll definitely talk about in the text messages or emails or whatever. Well, do you do you see a? a uh, I mean, do you see a benefit? Like, what what is a pro from not using Lauren? Well. There at the end, Lauren, Lauren's selling again, oddly enough. Um, before I went away, I was selling maybe 20, 30 books. Um, and that's that's even with South of here, with new releases. Mm -hmm. I was selling like 20, 30 books a month. Um, and now that I'm back, I'm selling anywhere between 40 and 50. Uh, I don't know why I'm not doing I did one video saying they were back up, and now people are just, you know, people are buying. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the, uh, the the cons to using Lauren would be like, like I said, the... There are going to be a lot of people in the in the in communities you run in that are not going to read the book or not going to want to blurb it or not even going to want to read it to blurb it that kind of thing um as some of them might even shock you uh, <laughs> but it's because they're decent people who just you know happen to bump into me at the wrong time in my life kind of deal um the other i don't i don't really other see, see any other cons other than the fact that like i said we would have to sign a contract for a certain amount of books Mm -hmm. uh together so that there was a contract that superseded the uh whatever contract i'm going to sign in the future now is anything going to happen with that after the strike is over i hope so but i have no guarantee if those projects are you know going to be viable to begin with yeah. so do i have other outlets yes i do are they going to ask for the same thing i honestly don't know because the last people that i worked with sprung it on me last minute they were they were just going through they did a background check on me of course because they were going to be you know investing in me um, and then with, with the background check, their person found all the, the Lauren books because I, I made them aware of the name uh, and all the other names. I tell any person that I'm in business with about all of the names so that if anything comes out, you know, they're not surprised, that kind of thing. Um, and then the NDAs are signed and all that good shit. But uh, they sprung it on me. They're like, uh, what is the betting of boys about? And I explained it to them and I was like, uh, it's is it? It's not kitty stuff, is it? Like, you know, they actually thought it was erotic. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't bother reading it. 
they still haven't read it. And I was like, no, it's not. And they're like, well, it sounds that way. I was like, I got a bloody bed sheet ghost on the front of the cover. How does it sound like that? <laughs> I will never forget this conversation. Like, yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. Can you take that down? Like, we'll pay you. I'm like, I can take it down, but it's still going to show up. You know, as far as in search results and, and everything, I can't wipe to the internet of this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's gonna this is gonna be a problem. I'm like, okay. Um, so they paid me an absurd amount of money just to kill Lorne. And so yeah. But anyways, I get to keep the money because they're in breach of contract. That's a good thing. Yay me. Um, but the <laughs> had the strike not happened, I would have been in an even better position. Anyways, uh so that's the only thing I have right off the bat would be that people would come out of the woodwork but i told you this last time also that there are people who are not yeah. going to want to read this well so. i'm 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 not as, as worried about the community <clears throat> community as i used to be the horror the horror community which is what we're most affiliated with even though it's right uh we're adjacent to that yeah, it'd be 100 percent people from that community is, yeah we wouldn't have to worry about that as far as success for the book i realized over the years that the horror community that we're affiliated with is much smaller than they think they are oh i i, I know i told todd keesling this a while back and i was like i don't want to sound like a douchebag but it's not as important as you think it is it's not a it, it isn't my my case in case in point my buddy pat Ivana, which i i have talked to you about mm -hmm. who used to write horror um he makes he makes uh <clears throat> nearly mid six figures on his <clears throat> excuse me self-published stuff nobody knows who he is mm -hmm. and he doesn't he does he barely has a social media presence he's not affiliated with any of the people that we are who seem like big rock stars in the small scope of things and it's like um he he's a really good example and i've got other friends too who are making a great living uh self-publishing zombie fiction post apoc all this kind of stuff and nobody knows who they are right no so. absolutely 100 percent um it happens all the time uh yeah six figures on self-published isn't that isn't that rare it is rare it's hard um, but it, it's it's but it but there's more people doing it than you would think you know oh, yeah. i would say it's more than one percent which is what most people think um it's there's quite a few people especially the ones who were around like amanda hawking and hugh hugh howie and uh, j.a conrath all the uh, original like 99s i call them the 99 cent crew um from amazon's early days they would put their book up for 99 cents and people at that point in time had not even considered being able to buy a book for a, a dollar not not after 2000 that was that was ridiculous so yeah. they would constantly um yeah amanda hawking started off as an indie author just throwing stuff un, literally unedited content up on uh, amazon and same with blake crouch blake crouch started off the same way he started off with uh, jay conrad took him under his wing after he had a horrible experience with a, a bigger publisher um but anyways uh uh the I completely lost my train of thought there. Where where were we going with that? Um, we're talking about the horror community being yeah, real yeah. small. Um, so it, here's when my eyes opened up. So I brought up a certain big name uh, author that neither one of us have a good opinion of to uh, one of uh, the people that I've been working with. Okay, um, he's a he's a director, done some major projects, and he literally asked me who. Um, and I, I said, you know, he's kind of like, like, I can't say anymore, but as like, to, to me, this person was a significant deal, at least in the community. And I thought it was wider. I didn't also. think of who you were talking about. Now I know exactly. Yeah. Who um, do I not like? Okay. It, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and it's not that we don't like him as we don't have a high opinion. Oh, anyways. But, uh, it's the, what I'm getting at is I mentioned that. And we were on a conference call and I said, this person, I brought it up because uh, of, of some other thing that, anyways, it doesn't matter what happened. His name came up. Um, and the one person who's now a good friend of mine at the time, just an associate, but a real good friend of mine said, who? And I explained as I like, never heard of him. And then there was a woman laughing um, off that wasn't even a part of the, the, the conversation. And my friend asked her was like, uh, 
I, I heard of him. But the last time I heard of him was like the 90s. So it's like he, I didn't even know he was still doing anything. Mm-hmm. And that's and as well as telling Todd Keesling is you'd be surprised at the people you think are major names in this in, in this industry don't get anywhere near the the I guess accolades that you think they might or the, the you know not these outside of the community nobody's even heard of them and I thought that was I thought that was interesting so that changed my entire perspective um, when you I'll, when you have to constantly talk about your accolades chances are you they're not. <laughs> This is true. This is true. This is absolutely true. Yes. Um, and that's that's another reason why I don't even go in for awards. Oh, wait. It, it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. But another thing is, I don't I don't know if you know this about me. I don't participate in awards um, at all whatsoever. Uh, no matter what name it is, I don't agree with it. But I am willing to do it with you. I just if we were to ever win anything, I'm like it once again, cart before the horse. If we were to ever win anything, it would be 100% you accepting and all that stuff. So I don't, I don't do that. I'm just letting you know. Just letting you know up front. Hey, Brad. Hey, Hello, Brad. everybody, by the way. Dog yeah. lover. What are you talking about, Haley? Alec, Haley, Boggle Queen, Brad. Yep. Derek. <clears throat> Derek in here. Z- up, Derek? Derek? Oh, okay. I see it. Yeah, you left it with Joe said. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Um, um, okay. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I only had a couple. Um, You're fine. Now, can you think of a creative way to collaborate so we can have writing streams where both are, of us are writing the same book at the same time? Yes. Uh, we would use Streamyard. Um, we might have to like go have these on on Streamyard Premium or whatever because. Uh, I think we only get so much time to actually be live. Mm-hmm. I think it's 20 hours. And then after that, we have to start paying now. Okay. It didn't used to be like that, but I had to do it when we were doing a uh, NaNoWriMo. Um, and since you, you were guests, so I wasn't worried about that. But um, if you, if you want to do it that way, what we would do is we would do it on here on StreamYard. We would share our screen and we would use Google docs. So if we both want to work on something at the same time, we would go to the same Google doc and mm-hmm. that's how we would do it. Um, and you okay. can literally, you'll have a different colored cursor than I would, um, and we, we could hop back and forth in real time. If I'm more concerned about the, the like, do you have a, a creative ideas for the actual writing process where we're writing, we're able to write at the same time? The Did only you, thing- the, the I've only never written thing, like that before. The only thing I would say is the way that King and Straub did it, or at least the way they described doing it, Literally, King would be down writing and Straub would tap him on the sh- shoulder or something, like literally tag in and be like, I have something for this. And then he would jump in and he would write. And then, you know, it would go, it would still go back and forth. Um, but as far as both of us writing at the same time, we could go live on both of our channels at the same time, or we could do StreamYard and we can both share our screens. I believe that's free no matter how long we go. I don't know. Um, but you're able, you should be able to share your screen over on your end, and I can share my screen. So if we both wanted to write at the same time, we would be able to share. If I'm understanding what you're asking correctly. No. You're no, not. I'm sorry. Okay. That's fine. No, what I mean is, like, how are we going to write the same book at the same time? Like, um, I, I'm not talking about even if we weren't using the Internet, even if we were just sitting at home writing okay. our own thing. Usually it's like, I need this thing to go by. And then I'm like, okay, here, I'm passing it back. And now you do right. your thing. But if we're writing different scenes at the exact same time, is it, can you think of a creative way that, that we, like whether, I know that some people are like, I'll take this character, you take this. And then obviously you'd have to have some sort of outline, which I, I'm not against using, but I normally, which uh, I don't like doing it when I'm writing my own stuff, but I can see the, the benefit of collaborating with an outline. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's something like that, otherwise, uh, it yeah. would have to be just be uh, okay. Now it's my turn to write this thing. I don't know. Huh. I just wondered if you I had think, an, I, I an think idea. Going, going that route, um, it would be interesting, but we would a hundred percent would that idea we would 100 percent have to outline yeah we would have to know what what our point was for that chapter 
-hmm. And if we're both writing that chapter, and then we could literally just shuffle them together, like, you know, whatever points or whatever, we could, we could do it that way. Like we could go over, you know, live how to, you know, which line should stay, who said what better, that kind of thing. We could mm -hmm. always do that. It would, it would be a kind of cool competition too, to, uh, to see, you know, who, who 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 is more keepable that, that i think that'd be fun or it, it, I, I i don't know that's a that's a good one i never even considered writing a book like that well how about uh, we do this how about we formulate our ideas and then to where we're like okay this is the book we're going to write by that time we might have uh the beginnings <clears throat> um by default an outline that we could easily structure into an actual outline and then be like definitely. okay i'm going to write this opening scene you write the scene where dude goes to whatever and then we'll see how they i mean things will have to be revised you know that's pretty much how i did it with with tc um and it to go back to what i was saying earlier um i i didn't write the whole thing and tc came back we we shared you know we mm -hmm. we wrote uh you know i'll write a chapter we just we just did not limit ourselves to not writing each other's characters, I guess mm -hmm. is, the, is the way. So we wrote just as much as each other um, in the book. And then she went back and overhauled the entire thing from the ground up. So it was a collaborative process to write the book, but it was her process to clean everything up and get it, you know, and I'm pretty sure she rewrote whole, whole chapters. And it was all a matter of, it's just like any rough draft. It was all a matter of getting the ideas out on the page so that we could then make a cohesive story out of those ideas. Um, and most of it ended up staying anyways, but she did have to rewrite whole sections because either I was slacking that day or she wasn't on her, she wasn't firing on all, all cylinders, whatever. Um, however you want to do this, I'm down for, it. and the most unique way possible is I, I, I'm down for that. So however you want to try it, man, I am open for anything. And none of this stuff is concrete. So we can change at any, you know, any state in the game, we can, oh, yeah. we can flip and do it a different way if it's not working or if we find that another way is working better, so on and so forth. Yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot of our ideas, <clears throat> a lot of the really good ideas won't come until we're there, Yeah, you know, actually, or, in, or in, we in might have to back up and go, oh, I got, I got something that's going to take this in a whole different direction. Right. I ju that just happened with, uh, uh, novel I wrote with uh, John Bowden and it was gorgeous how it happened and it turned a, an otherwise potentially boring book into uh, you know one of the best things I've ever written. Okay, so <clears throat> I, will, I, I have so we're talking like Southern Goth grit lit stuff. Um, here's the idea. I only brought one idea to the table. Same. You can uh, you know mine this uh, cannibalize this, whatever, uh, pick parts that, you, that, that you're attracted to. Uh, teen lives with a family that's been forced to raise him. Uh, the family deals meth, heroin, whatever, what have you. Uh, an event happens that's the last straw for this teen, so he ups and leaves, taking as many of their drugs as he can um, with the intent to sell them along the way in order to fund this fresh start. Um, obviously they're after him They're again, they, they don't really, they were for, put into a position where they, I don't know, maybe his parents died or whatever. And they just, he fell into the laps of these people that mm -hmm. could care less. So um, it's almost, almost like a Harry Potter deal, you know, where his parents, the, the, his new guardians don't want Okay. Him. Yeah. 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 That, that's the only, um, I'm, I'm not trying to say it sounds like Harry Potter, but it, that's yeah, the closest yeah. comparison I have. He meets all sorts of people along the way. Yes. I realize this sounds like a cross between Skullface Boy and Three Smile Mile. <laughs> Dude, this is but, literally, you're going to get a trip out of what my idea was. Um, Go ahead, finish the, up. Here's the part you're probably going to really like. Now, that that's the, the first idea. Then I have a, an idea that could go along with it and, and take it into, it would stay the same, everything that I said. Mm -hmm. But the kid could join a modern... Um, traveling like county fair slash carnival <laughs> which i i know you probably get a, a boner right now yeah, uh, yeah but um and that's where the real story begins and not an old school like freak show type thing but just a regular county yeah. fair uh potential for lots of shady characters with great backstories and the whole time this kid is trying to keep secret that this family is after him and that he's still holding these drugs um as some kind of desperate plan b um 
and then maybe even meeting someone in his town at the at the the fair while it's there is the catalyst for him being like i've had it i'm mm -hmm. taking off I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go out with these guys I mean, he could meet a girl he could meet a, 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 a you know a, a guy that he somehow is bonding with or whatever but that that's my idea okay uh i like it and i already say yes but i'm going to tell you my idea um beforehand because it's the similarities are crazy and i even brought this up to you way back when we were going to collab there was a idea that i had called goodbye road um and what would happen is there's this dying father um who's terminal and he wants to go on the road to visit uh all of his people before he dies um mm -hmm. and but his son doesn't know anything about this his son his estranged son decides to go with him which is the road trip thing so we were both on the same page yeah. with the road trip. i love road trip stuff yeah um and i don't care how much it sounds like skull face boy I, I would love to do a road trip thing with you um but anyways the uh he he would go but he's he's on the run and he he makes it seem like he's on the run uh with his dad that he wants to go with his dad just because he loves his dad but he could care less he's really on the run because he stole someone's drugs and right, okay. the, that's the that's the that's the funny part because so that's that's what i was going to tell you um and then along the way they ended up they end up bonding but uh it's it's been a story i've been wanting to write almost as long as like the trailer park uh pedo story you know that mm -hmm. that's just something that's been in my head for a while uh south of here came about but i don't know if goodbye road will ever get written so i figured i'd throw that one on the table but that was my only thing but i'm i'm down with yours um do like a yeah like a palisades park uh alan bernard is one of my favorite uh novels of all time um so i am down with the coney park idea uh so we would have right off the bat we would have the instigating effect of the family and stealing the drugs and running off a road trip section and then ends up at a coney island type fair and then he ends up bonding with someone there and the people there and we even end up there at the end we could have the entire attraction the, the entire theme park help him in the end from the from the drug dealers i think that would be awesome almost like turning the entire place into a fun house so that you know things are jumping out at these guys that are, anyways that, that, I'm, I'm already i already got ideas pouring out of my head as soon as you mentioned that i was like i see whole scenes in my in my head and yeah uh, so i'm down with yours we don't have to talk about that anymore i love that idea i, I especially want to write the family uh yeah so i'm down I, I, okay. I love it. It, we, that's that's already over and done with and I was gonna, I was gonna write everything down, but then I realized that I don't have to do it in real time. I can just go back and watch the replay of the video. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> just timestamp like where, yeah. you know, whatever we're at right now. Forty yeah, minutes at, in. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start about uh, 35 minutes, and uh, you know, go go from there. Uh, let's see here. Well, the the only reason I was gonna use Haley, the only reason I was gonna use the dad was because you know it would be a it, it'd be the other side of the it would be the drama side to the action side so you have the drug dealers coming after the kid and i was thinking about using mob or something like that but you have the drug dealers coming after the kid and the father thinking that the boy you know i was just, the whole book was just going to be to tug at heartstrings um but i really love the idea of course you you knew i would of the whole amusement park thing uh just because i love the characters that we can that we'll be able to do uh, do you want to do this in the past? Um, I think it would be more fun to do it before, like, the invention of cell phones. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big fan of the cell phone in, in literature. I am well-educated on 80s and 90s. If we go any farther back, you're going to have to carry us. Because I I know you're only 10 years older than me. But if you go any farther back, I don't know. Should I know about the 20s and the 40s, but I, that's about the only thing. I would have to do mad research. I mean, like <clears throat> maybe late eighties would be would be good. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know how these things work. I know that we have a um, a carnival that comes. It, well, we've got a couple that come around here in town, different locations, but we have one in particular that it's one city over. That it's the county fair, and they show up for like a week or something, and then you got your four H. So, so the whole place smells like tractor poles and pigs yeah and um 
So, you know, and I, it never occurred to me that this is just a tour for them, you know, mm -hmm. I, that they're on to someplace else. And, and not every single place smells like tractors and pigs. That's the, yeah. you know, you, you have a wide variety of things with any traveling show. Um, I did a lot of research for the big project that I was working on. Um, I think I told you about that one. But anyways, um, and I'm still technically working on it. Uh, so traveling shows are pretty much my thing right now. Like, that's what I have the most. But if, if, do you, do you want to do a traveling show or do you want to do something like uh, a boardwalk? It doesn't matter to me. I'm hyped either way. But do you want to do a traveling show or do you want to do someplace that's, you know. I like, a, the, I like the traveling thing because I like the idea of constantly being on the run. Yeah. And I like setting that. up, tearing down, setting up, tearing down. And the, just mm -hmm. kind of like this. Uh, Dude, I got you. Um, and because that's where they live. If if it's stationary, then they all have their own homes and their apartments right. and stuff. So I like the idea of being kind of nomads. Oh, yeah. Everybody is a nomad. I had one idea that kind of got cut from the process because it didn't make any sense. And I decided to use a train instead. But it was pretty much just a, a caravan of uh, uh, semi-trucks and trailers. And in those trailers, there were bunks. Um, and of course, air conditioning and whatnot, they would set the reefer unit for, you know, not freezing, you know, just, just cool enough to where, uh, it, they, they'd be comfortable in the back of the trucks and then like grates over the top that they could cover up if it's raining for, for air circulation. I had, a, I had a bunch of ideas like that. So if you wanted to use something like that, um, and cause it was like one trailer was just for the bunking and then all the rest of the trucks in the fleet. Um, uh, and it wasn't a big, big thing, but uh and re all the rest of them were you know the equipment and everything you know they have a flat bed for the rides and and whatnot um but yeah i've that's dude re that's all i've been researching is traveling shows like carnivals circuses uh, all that that's all i've been researching for the past three years so <laughs> the, that that really yeah we're, we're already a step ahead of the game there with, with that kind of thing and on top of that there are thousands of videos online from every single decade uh, time frame of uh, people either documenting their experience living with a traveling show or hmm. just interviewing people that work at these traveling shows. So there is a wealth of knowledge online. And on top of that, I got a whole stack of books that are carnival and circus themed, uh, most of them nonfiction. So, yeah. You, dude, you need to read... Um... Freezer Burn by Joe Lansdale. I, I, I ordered it and I'm going to get to it, but I got to get Broad Street Bastard. Broad next. Street Bastard will take you. I know it did. You know, it's yeah. short, but yeah, Freezer Burn. Um, I, that must be where some of this idea came from because I just read Freezer Burn this year. And uh, I mean, it's it's not copying any anything of it, but there is a, you know, somebody that attaches themselves to a, a, a traveling, you know, carnival oh. like that. But it's got a lot more humor than than I would want to uh, than I would want to do. But yeah, it's it's a great it's a great book. And also, um, shoot, what was I gonna say? Man, I'm already in love with that, this idea. I'm just throwing that out there. I love it because it reminds me of my favorite. While you're thinking, um, chat, it reminds me of one of my favorite books. It reminds me of Twilight Eyes by Dean Koontz. Mm. So, I haven't read that one. It's it's not really he's not on the run from anything but it is definitely about an outsider coming into a you know a carnival uh this guy's named slim mckenzie and he can see uh he can see goblins but to everyone else it's pretty much like what they live where uh you know you put the sunglasses on you yeah. can see but in his version they're actual like medieval like not medieval they never existed but um act, actual like goblins from folklore kind of deal uh, yeah. from fantasy and only he can see them uh, and then he end up ends up meeting a girl who can so and anyways, but the best part of the book is just them being at the carnival and him working day to day. That's the best part of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, just the smells and everything that Koontz evokes is and is top tier carnival story. Uh, the only one I like more is Geek Love. But anyways, yeah, yeah. man, I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't sure. read. I don't think I've read any fiction other than Freeze to Burn, and then of course the amazing Carnival on HBO. Yeah, there's a lot of cool. Um, stuff in there 
But, I haven't watched the second season yet. I'm trying to save it, knowing that you know I will never get another season of it. That first season is absolutely iconic to me. That that's an amazing show, and I started watching it after I had my big project idea, and it really helped because I knew what. I'm glad I watched it. Normally, I'd be normally I'd be like, oh god, they have basically the same fucking idea as me, but it was able. I was able to watch that and be like okay while it is the same idea there are different themes there are everything and mine happens from 1920 all the way up to 2020 so it's a hundred year saga whereas theirs is only during the dust bowl and and the depression so and i but i was able to take the stuff that they did and make sure that i didn't do any of that um but yeah carnival is amazing i just haven't watched the second season I want to. I, I know it's early, but I want to throw a title out there because I have a tentative title for a. I'm like thirty some thousand words into a, um, a western that's, uh, like a cult Wendigo western thing that I was started years ago, and it has a tentative title, and I love the title so much, but I, it doesn't fit it. Uh, it fits it okay, but it fits it this way. It fits this idea mm-hmm. way better. Um, and that's Planet Caravan. Like the Black Sabbath song? Yeah, but like the Black Sabbath song. I like right? that. I don't, um, I don't mind that at all. At I least hope- tentatively, we can throw that on there. Uh, it's Like I said, it's much more fitting for this. Um, you know, this guy's How whole about- world now is wrapped up in just this, you know, traveling thing. That's his whole world. This is how my brain works. So I'm just throwing it out there. What if we call it Planet's Caravan and the guy who runs it is Planet? Maybe he's at the, like the size of a planet. Like he's a big round dude. And everyone <laughs> calls him planet. Yeah, we can write that down. Yeah, let's uh, let's think about that. Planets, and that way we won't fuck with Sabbath at all. Like their copyright. It doesn't matter. You can't copyright a song title. You can't copyright a song title. I didn't know that. Dude, I can. I've, I've I can tomorrow. It. I can write a song called "Stairway to Heaven" and put it on Spotify and get paid for oh it. Oh my god! And there's that's, another that's thing ridiculous. that can be done. It is. It is. But I mean, you you just kind of like who? It's a dumb decision on your part because you know if I wanted to write a a, a book that's called you know Catcher in the Rye, it's like my book's not going to be found. So it's just a dumb idea. You're it's bad yeah. marketing. So you want to come true. up with your own thing. So, Very true. but yeah, I've got you know, Saint Deep Waters is a, a song, and the, yeah, I that's how I found out about that that you can't. You huh. can't copyright book titles, song no titles. I had no fucking clue. I had no fucking clue. I had an editor. Um, I, I trust you more than I trust them. Um, this is the reason why they, they're no longer an editor. But I had an editor tell me um, that uh, song titles were litigious, or what, however you pronounce it, um, where you can get sued over them uh, if you put them in the book. So I figured that. Yeah, I need I need to look that up. See if that was even true. I just took that shit whole cloth. I probably should have researched that. But anyways, um, and we got in a big back and forth about using song lyrics. I was like, I have the approval of the person who wrote the song and they were still, they worked for the publisher and they were still like, ah, we don't have the approval. I was like, I can send it to you. It's like, we don't want the legalities of having to keep up with that. And all. it was, yeah. John, it was so a, so an artist named John Gom. If you don't know who he is, I think you dig him. Um, it's G O M M John Gom. He plays a percussive guitar and the song is called passion flower, something like that. Uh, but anyways, it's an, he's amazing. Check him out. Same, same with you guys. Check him out when you have time. Some people were trying to tell me recently that you could, um, have like a very tiny percentage of lyric in there under the fair use act. Yeah. The, but the I only, wasn't because the I, I, problem I, with fair use. sorry, I keep, <laughs> I keep talking over you. You say what you have to say, and I'll I'll make my point. I, make my point anyway. A couple of my books, um, I have gotten permission from a few of my favorite bands. The Accused and DRI let me use lyrics for Cannibal Creator and for uh, Slow Burn on Riverside at the beginning of the book. Uh, I got full permission. And then for Broad Street Bastard, there's a song, a Black Flag song called Bastard in Love that I really wanted to use at the beginning. I thought, I'll reach out to uh, Greg Greg Ginn, the guitarist. But I know also Greg, first of all, still owes Henry Rollins and, and freaking uh, Keith Morris and all those guys from Black that have been in Black Flag at one point still owes him royalties. Wow. And I know he's very stingy with the whole 
Black Flag Bar's logo. As a matter of fact, I made a T-shirt that you can still get on one of the sites, Red Bubble or T Public, one of the two, I think. Mm-hmm. It's got the Black Flag Bars, and it's got the because there's a there's a gazillion parodies out there of i know you're probably not familiar with the band but at least a yes, oh yeah i am black flag yeah i grew up yeah. listening to them the misfits all, all them kind yeah I'm, well, the, well the bars you know they're just wrong. you can get a parody of any you know you can get a, a justin bieber shirt that has like the bars and then it, in the right. black flag font it just says yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've seen stuff like that yeah well i made my own and it says jack flag and the flags are the overlook carpet oh um and he had that taken down, and I know it was him because when T Public contacted me, they told me who, who reported it and took it down. Petty and I thought, bastard. okay, so this guy's probably not going to let me use his lyrics, but I'm going to ask anyway. So I I reached out to SST Records that he owns, and then I reached out to um, an, uh, the Black Flag website, which is essentially him with other people that are have never been affiliated with the Black Flag. And then I joined, a, and then someone told me I should join this group, SST fan club group or whatever. So I go in there. There's people in there from Ron Ray's, the second uh, singer for Black Flag. He's in there constantly, you know, talking and stuff, other members, uh, fans. And so I asked them, is there any way, do you guys know how I can get a hold of Greg in? This is, what, this is all I want. You know, I want some permission to use. And that's when a lot of people were telling me about the fair use. And I almost did it. And I thought, I ain't, I ain't scared of Greg again, but I got scared. And that your copy, you'll find, does not have the lyrics in there because I didn't want to deal with. Well, you did the right thing because fair use is denoted by the copyright holder. Um, they what fair use means is there is they have to pick out certain pieces. It's the same with videos, uh, movies. Uh, books, uh, songs, all that stuff. Fair use is created. What you can use is created by the copyright holder. So to use that, you would have to have knowledge of what that thing is. And if you happen to pick the wrong line, which is a, I mean, that's like, that'd be like winning the lottery. If you happen to pick the right line, then you're okay. But if not, you can get sued for using it. Or yeah. you're going to have a, at, le- at the very least, he's going to hit you with a cease and desist and have it pulled down. So. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I got to run. Oh, you're fine, Viking. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, this, all these will stay up. So if you want to, you can catch this at any point in time. I know you showed up late, but uh, yeah, have a good day, man. We're, we're about to go anyways. I, I can't do longer than an hour because I got game night tonight. Um, is there. Okay, so we got our we got our idea. We probably have our uh, our title. Um, yeah, this is a very good session. We talked more about you know just the collaboration process than uh, than the actual story. But that'll be that'll definitely be enough for next time. We can just jump into it next time. Um, can can yeah. are you able to already tell whether this would be better suited first or third person? What, what I was wondering was, I, I've, I've long wanted to do, it'd probably be better as a third, but I really want to say first because it's such a personal story, just as one person. Um, mm. But I would also like to see bits and pieces of the, no, no, let, let's let's go first because what I'm, I don't want to take the, the risk of redoing something I've done in my big project uh, and that's third person almost omniscient so i have everybody's points of view point of views in there at some point in time um it's been a long time since i wrote first person though uh, <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to get back into it maybe not maybe not maybe this character will start speaking to me right off the bat um oh. i mean I'm, I'm fine with either way i have i have a hard time writing longer stuff <clears throat> In first person. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to mention. It's so much easier, and not just to pad it with other characters, but it's so much easier just to jump into another character's head for a little while. Um, also, I think you can, I don't know why, and this is this is not true, guys. Anybody out there listening for advice is not true. It feels like you can get more descriptive with third person 
than you can with first person. I don't know why, but it's like uh, in third person, I, I'm always I'm always more descriptive than I am with first person. With first person, I am all in that character's head, and that character's not walking around thinking about what the bushes look like, kind of shit. You know, he's just walking past the bushes. You know, he doesn't care if they're you know, bug and villa or whatever the hell they are. He, he doesn't give a shit, or they don't give a shit. Um, so that's the only thing. It'd probably be best for this if we did a close first person narrative and we just told this one person's story and then the other characters bleed over into the narrative, um, then jumping into their heads. Um, I really feel like, yeah, I, I think I want first person. Okay. You, you what do you think that? about, have you ever written in present tense before? Oh, yeah. Uh, I wrote a South of here in present tense, but I've written a lot of stuff in present tense. So, uh, um, yeah, present tense is fine. Um, I have no problem with that. Uh, I have no preference, but I do enjoy the, the urgency of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Makes for a, a fast read and more like that uh, I'm being told a story kind of feel. Yeah. Also, the, uh, the, the publishers that we're aiming at, um, at least off the jump, prefer that also. Um, okay. Because they're more, they're more either lit fic or crime. Um, and crime is always better in first person present tense, at least for me. I feel that way. Um, it's like you said, it's the immediacy. It's the urgency. You know, it, it also gets rid of the absolutely. I also have no problem getting rid of was in a first in a third person. But I have a problem getting rid of was in a first person. That, I hope I said that right. But anyways, I um, mean, in present tense, you don't have to worry about that at all. And it seems like you don't, you don't even have to replace it with, you know, is it's just it it feels more natural to me to get rid of that it's not really a filler word sometimes it's important but uh but yeah it's things like that um that i enjoy that you can really move along with present tense where it seems like past tense and of course past perfect just slows it bogs it the fuck down so anyways that's my two cents well that was productive and um let me know when you are ready to I don't know if we need to do maybe do uh, <clears throat> at least a rough outline. I mean, you had started talking about one. I, yeah, I, didn't I can. Take, I didn't. Take I can, note, dude. I get this. This is a book that I could sit down and write right now by myself. So I will definitely, if you want to go over ideas, I have. I'm literally bursting at the seams with ideas. So if you want to do a stream tomorrow or the next day or whatever, uh, sometime soon, hopefully, because the, yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah. I got the sure. whole thing running in my head like a fucking movie and I can't slow that down. So as soon as I get done here, I'm going to jot things down while I'm waiting for my gummy to kick in. Cause I'm going to take a nap before game night tonight. Uh, anyways, I'm going to write down all these ideas. So maybe the next episode, we don't start right away. We just go over like a, a rough outline mm -hmm. and then you can accept and, you know, get rid of any ideas that I have. And, you know, same with, you know, your stuff, we can blend and all that. So if you want to be thinking, you know, do the head work, uh, until next time. Do you have any idea when, when you want to do this next, when you're available to do it next? I, I'm, I'm very flexible. I mean, I'm working, I counted, I am, I am writing 13 different books right now. <laughs> Welcome but, to my world. <laughs> some of, of, again, some of the, one of them I'm not going to finish. Um, it's just too, it's too dark. I'm, I'm never going to do it. Too dark. But, yeah, it's too dark. Put it this way. I don't, I'm, I don't believe in trigger warnings. I think they, I think that they are counterproductive for someone who needs them. That's and right. I've read articles on the science behind them and how, anyway, trigger, trigger, um, how trigger uh, warnings in, a, in, in and of themselves are <clears throat> triggering when they didn't need to be. And this is one book that I would, I would uh, actually have trigger warnings because it deals a lot with things that would not bum somebody out, but could cause relapse. It's it it, it deals a lot with bulimia, anorexia, self harm, uh, yeah. things like that. I don't I don't want do it. to I don't want my book to like, yeah. yeah. I, I, and so and I'm, just, I'm just not doing it. You, but anyway, you, yeah, you know I'm pro them because I put them in my own stuff. But um, that's I mean that it's it's literally just a per personal preference. So uh, I have yeah. no problem with you not you know not wanting them or not you know that, that doesn't bother me at all um because the, the, they're there for the people who want them not necessarily need them 
but the mm. people who want them, they're there for you if you want it, so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I can't. Anyway, I you, you got I, me wanting to read it, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not finishing it. I just. I'm not. Okay. I no all right. But <clears throat> anyway, Alec, it's, um, sorry, I, it's already been taken. Alec uh, Neil Gaiman did one, and he pretty much said the same thing that Chad said uh, in the introduction to that collection. Anyways, go ahead, Chad. Uh, the um, the uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, like 13 books or whatever. But granted. I am not going in and out of these all day. Some of them I haven't touched for a year yeah. or so. You know how that is. You got all kinds of, some mm -hmm. of them I might not ever be able to get to. I don't know. I'm lately, I've just been focusing on the, I told you I was writing the cozy mystery, mystery yes. series, which is going a lot smoother than I expected. But other than that, I mean, I, I'm super flexible. So okay. um, I already gave you my schedule. And so I'm, I'm up for, you know, any kind of, I write every single day. So I'd, I don't want to like, I don't want to wait on it. You no. know, I don't no, want to. We're doing this now. Damn it. We're doing, I just didn't know if you wanted to do it tomorrow morning. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me one way or another. Um, uh, we can do it tomorrow. We can do it the next day. But yes, the sooner, sooner the better. Because yeah, like I, I can, said, I can, uh, playing out in my head. I can do tomorrow. Okay. All right. Tomorrow, same, same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. Okay. So tomorrow, guys, if you guys are, uh, <laughs> Sean says yes. Hang on. Uh, yes, the collab we've been waiting for. It, good morning to you too, Sean. Um, it, it was going to happen a while ago, but it was like a little bit of misconception, a little bit of uh, time, and a little bit of uh, how many projects going on. Because, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, and we actually wrote a chapter. We wrote, too. yeah. We wrote like, what, 3,000 words, three or 4,000 words? Okay. I don't even know where that is. I don't even think I have it anymore. It was actually I, oh, I'm a really sure good I idea. It was a really good idea, and once again, it was your idea. Um, that whole, <laughs> anyways, I don't want to. In case we tackle it again, I don't want to give it away. But um, yeah, this is this is fucking awesome. I'm a. Uh, I'm looking forward. Yeah, I'll be here uh, 5 p.m. That's 11 o'clock for you, Haley. <clears throat> I'm looking at it right here. We have, yeah, the two chapters. How many words? 2070. 2070. I thought it was about 3000, but, but that's another one. I had damn near the whole thing, like in my head. Um, I don't, I don't remember it now, but I remember writing it and having that, that urgency that, uh, uh, coming along. Um, I was, and then other stuff fell in my lap around the same time that you were like, Hey, I got too much going on. And I love that there was, a, there was that misconception that you thought I was strictly a horror writer. I love that that was one of it. One of the things, because I was I was also sitting there at that point in time. I was like, "Am I gonna, am I gonna have to?" I do remember. Am I gonna have to mimic him, or is this gonna happen naturally, or whatever? And then I found, it. It was almost like, we just end up writing like me, because it, it seemed like a little bit more long winded than you normally were. I think is what happened. And at that point in time, I was writing those more long winded books. So, uh, and then of course I go from that to South of here. Who, who, what the fuck ever, right? <laughs> But I've I've done I've done South the of South here of here style it, before. South of here was an idea that you pitched when yeah. we were yeah. Yeah, and that's I was why like, I dedicated the book. I, I was too scared. <laughs> I, I, I too understand. Scared to do that. I understand, and it would have been a completely different fucking beast, man. It would have been completely different. It might not have even worked out with both of us. Who knows? Because I I I, I don't know. But I'm I'm glad that I got to do it by myself. If for nothing else, the experience, the actually the best part about writing South of here was getting out of my own head because I was in a really bad way at the time. Um, and like I said, in either the intro or the outro, Shell's the one who typed up the book for me because I couldn't sit at my desk. So I was writing it all longhand before I got a new laptop. And she ended up typing up the whole, the whole thing. Um, she's done that for me twice so far. Uh, and it, anyways, I'm, I'm gonna get mushy if I keep thinking about that. But I was in a really bad place and it allowed me to get to express my own frustrations with life through a character who has nothing but frustrations but at the same time he's kind of you know not bothered by the whole thing you know he's just not bothered by life so through him i was able to not give a fuck at the time because i was able to get into his head and be like yo you know just just be as rude and disgusting as you you want to be because it's healthy to get 
that shit out of your head to get the frustrations. It's almost like playing violent video games when you're in a bad mood. You know, you, you get to and, I, and I'm a I have a anger problem as it is. Um, I don't, but I, I say this also, I don't hurt people. I hurt things. So I'll, I'll break, I'll break a toaster or some shit, but I won't touch another human being. That's the kind of anger I'm talking about. Um, but my dad was a very violent, physically violent person. Not, not to me, but he had those moments. Um, and I got a little bit of that in me. So I'm always looking for a way out. And that's the best part about writing for me is anytime I need that way out, I don't have to go read. I don't have to go watch a movie, play a video game. I can just play in my own head. You know, and that's that's another reason why I write so goddamn much is because I'm constantly needing that escape. So it was like, I don't know how you do it. It's like I don't have any other choice but to do it. Um, in fact, my sister, who has no filter whatsoever, said um, I probably would have ended up being a serial killer <laughs> if I hadn't have found some kind of creative outlet. And while I hated her for saying that for the longest time, damn it, it might have ended up true because my brain is is not. Well, you all have read my work. Y'all know what I've done. All the horrible things. I had to think about that. Anyways, like Hope for the Wicked, which is something you need to read. <laughs> That's the closest thing to South of here. Uh, it's a hitman story. But uh, and there's two books. There's Hope for the Wicked and Pennies for the Dam. And it's a hitman who only kills pedophiles. I know it's an overdone concept, but when I wrote it, it wasn't. Uh, nowadays, it's like everywhere. Uh, but anyways, the... Uh, it it's more it's more Lansdale than you you might think. And the funny part about it is I hadn't read any Lansdale at that point in time. Mm -hmm. It was very short, choppy, pitch black humor, twists and turns. Just anyways. But uh, yeah, I've, I <laughs> but anyways, there's a I wrote that in the whole point of that before before we go. The whole point of that was is I wanted to get this image, I'm a very visual person, and someone I was talking to at the time mentioned uh, Tijuana Donkey Shows. And I, of course, the very first thing that happened when they mentioned that was the visual image. I spent three months with that just flashing randomly into my head. As you can imagine, that's fucking upsetting, right? To, to constantly have that image in your head. So I put it in the book. And there is only one line in the book about what happens about what is going on in the moment. And it involves a jar of Crisco, branded Crisco. Um, as you can imagine what the Crisco is used for. Um, okay. And everybody, everybody who reads it swears up and down that that is the most grotesque, detailed description of bestiality they've ever read. It isn't there. The line literally goes, slathered in Crisco, it thrust and was in. That was it. That's the entire line. That's all it said just before someone rushes in to stop it. And it, it's I, I find that amazing that you can say so little, in especially in fiction, you can say so little and say yeah. so much. Um, people swear that 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 uh, the that scene in it, people I've even sworn that it's five, six, ten pages long. It's like a page, it's like a half a page, if that. The actual scene. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm just rambling at this point in time. We got we got good stuff done. Uh, <laughs> Haley's already eaten her game snacks. That's terrible. Um, but okay, so tomorrow, uh, 9 a.m. my time, 10 p.m. yours. Hopefully I get up at a decent time so my brain is not a complete fog for the first 10, 15 minutes we're talking. Anyways, uh, but you happy with today? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I just talked too damn much. So anyways, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, tomorrow. You have plenty of shopping time left, Haley. Uh, so tomorrow, once again, same bat time, same bat channel. But until then, all hail the chair.